Hello everybody, this is Lara with your video for the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday 2nd of September. I'm still expecting the primary two is incomplete. We've been expecting this downward movement. It's continuing toward the target at 3144. Lowry's are now rather bearish at the end of this week and there have been, uh, I think, three 80% and a 90% downward day in recent downward sessions. So normal volatility associated with a continuing bear market. For the very short term, I'm expecting a bounce or consolidation for a second wave correction may end in a few sessions sometime next week. Either the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio at 406.499 or the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio at 4164.39. It should remain below 4818.62. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. I will go over monthly charts with you next week. For this week, let's just look at weekly charts. The March 2020 bear market ends here. I have that labelled as a cycle degree fourth wave, where four ends, five begins. I'm expecting cycle wave five to unfold as an impulse, because from this low to this high, this upward movement fits beautifully as a five wave impulse, and so I will label this primary wave one. That looks like the correct degree of labelling for a move of this duration and length. When one ends, two begins. I expect primary wave two may most likely reach down at least to the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of primary one, which is at 3195.28, but we have some more structure within it now. We can use Fibonacci ratios between A and C within the zigzag of primary two to calculate a better target. So here we have an impulse for A, a zigzag for B, and if C were to reach equality in length with A, that gives us a target at 3144. Draw an Elliott channel around primary two, it fits beautifully. I've drawn this from the start of A to the end of B, beautifully uh, tested for support here at the end of minor two. Place a parallel copy on the end of A. Now if it's time consuming enough, C may continue along support at the lower trend line, but it could be powerful enough to break through support at the lower edge of that channel. Sometimes C waves do that. They are in a third wave position and they can have similar to third wave strength. Primary wave two may not move beyond the start of primary one below 2191.86. At the stage of intermediate wave B would continue higher, and I have that idea as an alternate. It's a B wave, we've got to be flexible. If it does continue, it may not move beyond the start of A above 4818.62. Daily chart now, this low here, intermediate wave A. This point here, intermediate B, fits quite nicely as a zigzag. A, B, and an extended impulse for wave C. There's a triangle in here for wave 4. If B is over here, then C has begun. The target is 3144. Intermediate C may only subdivide as a five wave impulse, and it looks like it may be unfolding. As sorry, may only subdivide as a five wave motive structure, either an impulse or diagonal, and it looks like it's unfolding as a more common impulse. Within it, I expect minor wave one may be over at Thursday's low. We may see a bounce or consolidation continue next week to those targets. I've put those in the summary for minor wave two. Minor two may not move beyond the start of one above 4818.62. If it gets really high, which is entirely possible, it's a second wave, they can be deep, it should find resistance at the upper edge of this channel that I've copied over from the weekly chart. This trend line has a reasonable little bit of technical significance. When two is over, then this wave count will expect minor wave three down to begin. It's within a C wave, so it could be particularly strong. It should show an increase in momentum and it'll probably have push from volume. At the daily chart level, this is an alternate. I have moved the degree of labelling within intermediate B down one degree, and here I'm considering the possibility that it may be a combination or a flat correction. It could also be a triangle. If it's a flat correction, then it'll be labelled 3, 3, 5, or subdivide 3, 3, 5, and be labelled A, B, C. A would be a zigzag. B may, should continue lower as a single or multiple zigzag, and for a flat, minor B must retrace a minimum 90% the length of A at 3705.77. 
If it's a flat correction, then the common range for minor B is from 1 to 1.38 times the length of minor A, giving us a common range 3636.94 to 3375.37. Intermediate B may also be a combination. The first structure in a double combination may be a complete zigzag labelled minor W. The three may be joined, or the first and second structures in a combination may be joined by an incomplete 3 in the opposite direction, a zigzag labelled X, subdivide or labelled, labelled A, B, C for C down to begin. There's no minimum or maximum requirement for X waves within combinations. X waves and combinations are usually very deep and so far this looks relatively deep in comparison to this. So if this is wave X, it's wave X within a combination. X waves within multiple zigzags are relatively brief and shallow, so I think we can all but eliminate a uh, double or multiple zigzag for intermediate B. Now the other possible structure here for intermediate B would be a triangle. A, B incomplete, C, D, E. Sideways movement in an ever decreasing range probably for a few weeks yet. Those possibilities are still entirely open for intermediate wave B. When B waves are unfolding we have to be really flexible and open minded. There are more than 23 possible structures a B wave can subdivide as. They are the most difficult Elliott wave structures to analyse and sometimes it's impossible, or well, often it's impossible to tell they're complete for some time after they really are complete. Price movement's going to confirm for you that they're over. But the strength within this downward movement in terms of classic technical analysis, 380% and a 90% down day, really does not look like a B wave. So this is an alternate based on technical analysis. If an, uh, an expanded flat would to be unfolding, A, B, C, then we can eliminate that based on, or, or confirm that, or not confirm, but have confidence in it, either eliminate the idea or have confidence in the idea based on classic technical analysis. When a B wave is unfolding, your classic technical analysis is absolutely vital to either hold with that B wave or say that it's over and move on into the C wave. So far the strength in this downward movement is telling me we should move on from this wave count. We may very well do that quite soon. For now I need to publish it as an alternate. It is valid. We need to be aware of this possibility. It expects most likely more downward movement next week. Okay, at the weekly chart level this week Another strong downward week, strong push from volume, quite strong downward movement this week. We've been expecting downward movement. I'm looking now for a little bounce or consolidation before it continues. It may be more brief and shallow, possibly, but we'll see how the little second wave unfolds. ADX declining, it's not caught up with the possible resumption of the downward trend, but if it does increase then it would still that would be indicating a not extreme trend because the negative DX line is above the ADX line. But now at this time, ADX is declining. No clear trend. RSI, money flow, and stochastics all in neutral territory. And ADR, ATR increasing as price falls, a slight decline as price sorry increasing as price falls, a slight decline just for the last few weeks, probably a hangover of this previous upward movement. At the daily chart level, Friday's session completes an upward session but the candlestick is red and volume has declined so a little bit of a mixed, difficult to interpret session here but we've got one, two, uh, three 80% down days yep, and a 90% down day within this downward movement. This looks like a resumption of the bear market, it doesn't look like a B wave so that supports the main Elliott wave count. Price has broken through support at all of these levels, next support just above 3,700. On balance volume is making new lows prior to price. This divergence is bearish, no signal as there's no range that's just broken out of. The last signal was a bearish signal. ADX declining on Friday, there's no clear trend with Friday's upward session. RSI, money flow, both neutral stochastics oversold and ATR declining as price moves higher and at the daily chart level we can start to see now a normal increase in ATR as price falls, so that's absolutely normal behaviour and supports the view that this is probably the resumption of a bear market and not necessarily a B wave. Okay, let's round out the picture with breadth and volatility. 
At the weekly chart level, both price and the AD line have declined this week, both quite strongly. No new divergence, neither of them making short-term swing lows or neither of them moving below this prior low, this important low back here. That's neither bullish nor bearish. The AD line is falling in line with price. This is normal to be expected behaviour. At the daily chart level, oh, I should have actually noticed this is slight bearish divergence. It's just so slight though, so I'll leave that. But price has actually moved higher on Friday, a high, high, high low, but the candlestick's quite strongly red. And breadth has declined, so there's more declining decliners within that session. There's actually more downward volume as well within that session. And so this is overall bearish. This is the long-term divergence between the NASDAQ AD line and the S&P 500. NASDAQ for a very long time, for over 10 years, has been making lows prior to the end of the global financial crisis. This is the March 2009 low. And yet price has not, it's been on a, over a decade long bull run. Very obviously, this is hopeless in terms of timing. A bear market, we could have said that an absolutely huge bear market must unfold here because the NASDAQ AD line was below these prior lows back down here. And yet that didn't happen. The S&P 500 went on a bull run. So I am viewing this as a really early warning signal. And when this aligns with the NYSE All Issues AD line, then I will call for a huge bear market. I think this one, this divergence, is probably going to develop further as that fifth wave comes to an end. And for the a trend change, the magnitude of a grand super cycle degree trend change, I'd want all of these divergences to be in alignment at least six months or more. That's not the case yet, but this one is over 10 years now. There's midterm bearish divergence as well. The NASDAQ AD line has made new lows below the COVID crash, the March 2020 crash down here, and yet the S&P 500 has not. Now this doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean that the S&P 500 must follow because there isn't that divergence between the NYSE All Issues AD line as well. When they align together, then I will expect price to follow. Well, they're not in agreement, then price will not necessarily follow. But there is this divergence we need to note. There was short-term bullish divergence here. It's now been resolved. Price made a new high. The NASDAQ AD line also made a new high. And now price is falling. So that's been resolved. No new divergence this week as they both decline. But just to note that the NASDAQ AD line is declining a little bit faster than price. Not enough for it to be considered divergence though. Between inverted VIX and price, this week price has moved lower. Inverted VIX has moved slightly higher. Very odd behaviour. We see this from time to time. It's not behaving as it normally does within a bear market, which makes me think overall that maybe this bear market is going to be on the more shallow side rather than a very deep bear market and a very long-lasting bear market. This week, with declining price, there's been a decline in the uh, a decline in volatility, which is not normally associated with declining price. This is divergence for the very short term. This may actually support the view of that little second wave bounce to come. Both VIX and VVIX have declined this week. No new divergence there. For the short term, uh, we had these two days in a row. Price moved lower. Inverted VIX moved higher. On Friday, both price and inverted VIX had moved higher. No new short-term divergence. Between VIX and VVIX, though, for Friday session, the volatility of VIX has increased, while VIX has actually slightly declined. So it's really weak. It's really, really short-term. I won't give that any weight in the analysis. That's all from me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope all our members are looking forward to a fantastic weekend.